Welcome to Care Talk. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. John, it's good to see you, and especially because I want to ask you about your friend Alex That's Azar. My friend. He's just been confirmed as head of HHS. What mm -hmm. are we in for? I think we are, you know, taking a representative of healthcare as it is and put him in charge of healthcare the way it, the way it, it's going to change. And I, I worry that a guy who's been basically a price taker over a long period of time for big pharma is not the right fit for um, a, a job where he's going to actually be able to set the market around drug pricing. See, the thing is, John, whereas Trump talked about how he's the consummate insider, he knows how to play the system, and he was just BSing, I think that Azar actually does know how to play the system. So if he wants to help to straighten it out, he actually is in a position to do what Trump said he would do, but can't. He's brilliant, but I don't think he cares. His track record would suggest that he's not willing to actually address the breakdowns in our pricing that have led to higher drug prices than anywhere else in the world. I think that, uh, that he's probably the, the best candidate they could have put up, but at least around things like drug pricing, we're in for trouble. So cost is a big issue, not just with, with drugs. What do you see happening with cost? Are we going to get cost under control in the U.S.? What's, what's the problem there? Well, I think that the challenge is that there was a lot of momentum in Obamacare around the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, around the bundled payments, and that slowed down really dramatically under price. And the, the hope with Alex Azar is that he will uh, grab the mantle and move us faster towards bundling uh, or basically setting up health care on a budget and doing it in a way that, uh, that, get, that, en that engages more of the physicians in hospitals faster because if we don't have that, we're just going to have mandatory budget cuts at some point. We can't afford the healthcare system that we've got. So what are some of the things before we talk about bundles, like just some of the prices that are out there, like are there particular things that you think are just really besides drugs that need to well, be controlled? Well, I mean, pr pricing's out of control, David. I mean, you've got, if you, if you, you know, as a consumer, you don't know if you see a doctor in one office, whether you're going to get charged a hospital facility fee. If you've got a sick kid and you take them to the ER, you're always going to pay more. There's no easy way for consumers to understand the difference between an urgent center and an emergency room. It's a system where, where more and more of the burden's being put on the consumer and they have less and less transparency on what that pricing means. There, there's price distortions there, throughout the system. You know, I don't think the consumer can be expected to handle prices. It's enough to figure oh, you, out where to get to the emergency room. You're smarter than the consumer. Like, why wouldn't you share pri more pricing with the consumer? Because they got enough else, smart. They got enough other things to, to worry about when they're sick. That's a Besides typical, price. arrogant healthcare person. <laughs> Consumers can handle price transparency. Call me typical, John. Consumers yeah. can handle price transparency. They need to have more of it. If you give consumers more information, they'll make smarter decisions, and it'll force some amount of competition in the system. It's not the whole solution, but it's a start. So you mentioned uh, bundle payments, mm -hmm. and also that CMMI was, was slowing down. They have this new uh, BPCI Advanced. What do, you, what do you think of that? Well, I think it's a, it's a better system. It, it reflects the, the BCPI, the Bundle Payment Initiative, the advanced version. First of all, it was only 44 pages in, 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 the, in the way it was expressed. And so clearly CMS is listening to the concerns about overwhelming paperwork coming out of CMS. And also it's a narrower set of indices and it still moves the, 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 the ball forward effectively around bundled payment giving people access to health care in a budget, but also thinking about access and quality. The challenge is it's voluntary, and I don't think it's going to be successful. Because it's voluntary. Yeah. Yeah, I think actually voluntary is there's a bit of a genius in having it uh, be genius. voluntary. It's, it's, genius. It's, it's, it's genius. I'm not sure who the genius was that came up with it, but somebody in the government. And the reason that, that it's genius is that what happens is They don't is want to that take the, the political heat. Yeah. For forcing people to change to something they should right. already so be doing. Right. So instead of that being a distraction, then those that want to move forward with it and try to uh, improve can do it. And if they but, do well enough, they'll get ahead of their peers. But David, it was voluntary have... before it became mandatory, right. and now it's just going back to voluntary. So all we're going to do is reduce the number of participants moving towards a budget, healthcare in a budget, total knees, total hips being the, the, the biggest categories initially. And we, we know it works. It should work. Let's do it right and make sure everybody changes. I think that it's 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 good enough that they're actually moving forward with something instead of killing it or undermining it, and that it has the real basis to replace the DRG system, which just pays for the That's bundle within the hospital. Right. That's absolutely and right. can pay for the whole thing. So I, I think we should be happy enough that they're that they're moving along uh, with it now and hope that uh, he doesn't kill it. Well, the good news with, with Alex Azar is he does really understand healthcare and pulling the outpatient and the inpatient together around a budget would make a lot of sense. But to get hung up over mandatory and voluntary is, is just going to slow down the innovation we know needs to happen. 
So I want to come back to drug prices because you talk about drug okay. prices as being the problem. And I wonder, is it, is it really just the, the problem? Is it really just drugs. the price? Doesn't it have something to do with a convoluted way, you know, beyond fee for service that drugs are paid for with rebates, administrative fees, and then the copays all of that's out an by output the, the of the fact that the drug pharma keeps charging more of here. We need to protect a pricing environment that prices but these revolutionary biotech drugs that are in some cases curing cancer, for example. We need to price, but that's only thirty percent cancer. of they, they they do. All right, some of them do. And the the and cu really curing disease okay. and transforming people's lives. But seventy percent of the drugs that are being of the drug increases are drugs that are standard commodity products whose cost of production goes down every year, and pharma jacks the price up every year. Yeah, insulin uh, milk over the last twenty years has increased by twenty three percent. Insulin has gone up by over a thousand percent. That's crazy. And it wasn't. And it when the and, and as a and as a discovery, it was. It was given away on, for pennies by the people who discovered it. We have, we've got to address the fact that pharma has been given a license to print money by charging more for commodity drugs. We need to deal with that while protecting the opportunity to price for innovation. See, the and thing without, is without that, you can get all hyped all right. and bothered I'm about like, rebates, but that's a distraction. I'm nice and mellow because my, my generic drug is keeping me, keeping me it's mellow. It's a distraction. But John, if prices weren't that high, you wouldn't need all these other mechanisms to try to constrain them. But the thing is, you know, it, goes, it contradicts what you said before, which is the consumer is supposed to be able to understand something. Now, it's great. It's one thing to understand the emergency room versus primary care. It's another thing to say, well, the drug, the list price is higher, but then I got this thing that will pay my copay up to $500 a month. Different point, and you're right. We, yeah. should, we should create consumer tools for, far, for buying okay. drugs as well. But that's not the reason for all these conv the, the reason there's so many hands in the till and it's so complicated is because pharma sets the price for all drugs too high. I mean, it's just it, 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 that, that's a fact. All right. Well, anyway, we will, uh, we will see how Mr. Azar uh, handles it. Well, he'll know how to handle it. He will. All right, John, enough of the warm-up. Are you ready for the lightning round? I am. John, is 2018 the year that we turn the corner on the opioid crisis? Well, I think we're already turning the corner. It's not going to be solved overnight, but you're seeing people locally, docs, cops, policymakers. We've, Washington is failing here, but I think you're seeing a lot of leadership at the local level, and I do think we're making incremental progress. What about you? I'm more pessimistic. I think that actually what's happening is maybe if you go to the dentist and have a tooth pulled, they're not going to load you up with a month of oxys. Other than that's that, progress. I think it's the same, same old, progress. same old, and there's going to be plenty of heroin addicts, and I think we're just in, 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 right in the thick of it still. So David, Congress reauthorized Children's Health for another six years. That's Bipartisan progress. Are we going to see more? They pretty much let it expire anyway. I don't think Congress really cares about children. Well, they do care. They just and don't want to pay for it. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. If you can't agree on that, you're not going to agree on anything else. Maybe they'll agree on prevention, which is pretty well not worth the money that's spent on it. That might get consensus. I don't think anything uh, worthwhile is going to get consensus. Oh, but that's, that's unfair. You are actually seeing bipartisan movement around macro, around bundles, around the things that are complicated where we are moving to healthcare in a budget. I think that's going to that's going to incrementally, we're going to see incremental progress across the board on that. You're wrong. Well, one area that with bipartisan support has been health information technology. When are we going to see the payoff from that? I think you're seeing the payoff now. I mean, you, you actually, when you go into a doctor's office, they have more information and can share more information about your case across the care continuum. It's a little bit invisible to the patient, but we're, we're, we've got progress right now, David. I think we've turned uh, doctors into uh, high-priced data administrators, garbage in, garbage out, I think a $50 billion. Would you prefer to have a doctor that didn't have the information? I think a $50 billion write-off on the nation's HIT investment is coming soon. It's a $3 trillion dollar industry. <laughs> You'd rather have blind doctors that don't have information? I want a doctor that has the information about my case and, and can share it with nurses and doctors. You're wrong. <laughs> All right, I won't argue. But I will tell you that we are now at the end of Care Talk. If you like what you hear, I hope you'll subscribe so you can listen to us again. I'm David Williams from Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll from CareCentrics. Thank you.